Hi, I'm Steve Hansen, co-founder of thejanitorialstore.com and myhousecleaningbiz.com. You know, I just felt that it was probably time that uh, we told everybody our story. And, uh, you know, because there's, there's some haters out there that, uh, you know, keep talking their talk and thinking that they know all about us, but they don't know a single thing about us. So, uh, anyway, that's why I'm doing this recording. Um, you know, um, we got started in the, in the cleaning industry in the mid-80s, and that all came about when... Uh, when I met Gene uh, in La Crosse, Wisconsin. Uh, at that time we were dating and Jean was working for a large retailer at that time and she got transferred out to Boise, Idaho. So, uh, you know, she gets transferred out there and I'm wondering where the heck's Boise, Idaho? <laughs> and uh, 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 I check it out and, uh, you know, Jean leaves and, you know, she thought that we'd probably never see each other again. But, uh, you know, fortunately we stayed in contact and eventually I decided to go out and visit uh, Boise, Idaho. And uh, the time that I decided to do that, I uh, set up a meeting with a person that owned a boat marina. At that time, I was a boat manufacturer. I built boats for a living. Uh, I actually worked for a company that I had my own business uh, doing repairs. And uh, so anyway, I set up this meeting uh, with this gentleman to meet him on a Saturday at 12 noon uh, out at Boise, Idaho uh, in the downtown area. Uh, that's where his office was. So uh, get out there, Gene and I go and we drive downtown and uh, we sit there and we go to go into the office and the office is locked, uh, nobody around. Uh, just wondering what the heck is really going on here? Uh, because uh, uh, the guy said, you know, we'd meet at uh, 12 noon and talk about having a job working at his marina. But long story short, uh, he never showed up, so Gene uh, decided to just show me around uh, Boise and, uh, you know, just a beautiful, uh, beautiful area. So we went up the mountains, uh, went up by some of the reservoirs. Uh, you know, I told her, I says, well, I'd have a hard time making a living out here. There's not much water. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, it was a fantastic weekend. I decided uh, I went ahead and I flew back uh, to La Crosse uh, uh, to, where, uh, to where we were living. And, uh, I decided to go ahead and move out there. And uh, so here I was, a, a single guy, uh, owned my own home, had my, uh, working for a company, had my own business. So I had it virtually made, you know, in all, all respects there. Um, but I decided I was ready for a change and, you know, I really, uh, I really like this girl. So that's what I decided to do. I uh, moved out to Boise, Idaho, uh, sold everything, sold my house and everything and, and loaded up my pickup truck and drove out to Boise, Idaho. And, um, so uh, it took me about two or three days to drive out there, and I get there, and uh, then Gene and I were living in an apartment, and uh, you know I just told Gene that uh, you know I I really can't pay somebody else's uh, building off for him, so you know go ahead and go find a house that you want, and and, and we'll buy it. So uh, so that's what she did. She found a house that was on the Parade of Homes, and she she really liked it, so we bought that. I asked her to marry me. Uh, we flew back to La Crosse, Wisconsin. And we got married. Uh, that was in uh, uh, 1987. So at that time, I was actually working uh, for a, a person. And when I first got out to Boise, Idaho, what I actually did is uh, that following Monday, I went out and started looking for a job. And I actually got a job at a place uh, that was called uh, Sport King. Uh, Sport King uh, became, uh, you know, known for their uh, campers that they that you'd slide onto a pickup truck. And uh, you know most people know know what that is, and uh, that's why I went to work for. They were getting into the boat building business, and uh, they had uh, a few boats in there that needed to be finished up. And uh, lo and behold, here I walked in the door with all this experience. I've built over 750 boats from everything from an eight wooden, uh, eight foot wooden canoe up to an 85 foot paddle wheel. So obviously they, they hired me and offered me a job on the spot. So. Uh, so I, I took the job and I, uh, the first thing I started doing is I started installing motors uh, in this plant. And uh, lo and behold, uh, probably about a week or two later, here I met this Gary, this, this person uh, that was supposed to meet me uh, for that job interview that owned the marina. Well, he was now working for that company as a salesperson. Um, so that was, that was interesting. I'm going to fast forward a bit. Uh, one day, uh, this person comes to me and says, Steve, you know, we, there's a gentleman over in Caldwell that's uh, interested in uh, building a fleet of boats. Would you be interested in meeting him? I said, sure. So uh, that's what I did. I went over and I met this gentleman. Uh, he was a wealthy person. He, had, uh, owned, he owned a big construction company and some other companies and did pretty well for himself. 
uh, but he allegedly was the uh, one of the investors in building a fleet of boats and these here were all going to be uh, uh, houseboats and so anyway he offered me a job for eight dollars an hour and uh, I accepted and uh, so then what I did is, uh, you know, between myself, we hired uh, three other uh, people to help me build this boat because we built it from scratch. We built, you know, we uh, built all the plugs, all the modes, and then, then all the parts and pieces, and then we actually built this boat from, from nothing. Uh, and it took us a, a year, year and a half, I think it was, to do that. Uh, once we completed that project, I did some uh, uh, reconstruction of a sailboat for him and then some work on a small runabout. Uh, during that time, he came to me and he asked me if I could uh, make some light poles out of uh, fiberglass because the city of Boise was going to charge him $10,000 for, for these light poles that were around a, uh, an old creamery that he purchased and that he was renovating. Um, and uh, they were going to charge him $10,000 per light pole. They were, they were made out of cast iron and so on and so forth. So uh, he takes me over into his, one of his warehouses and shows me the light pole and asks me if I could build out of fiberglass. You know, I looked at it for a few minutes and said, sure, we can do that. So that's what we ended up doing then. And when I finished the boat, I built him uh, 15 of these light poles that were used for his uh, project down at the old creamery. So once I finished up that project, he had asked me if I wanted to be a superintendent on his uh, construction company. I told him, uh, you know, I'll, I'll take, uh, you know, I don't want to be a superintendent. I'll be a laborer uh, because at that time I was really into uh, uh, weightlifting, really enjoyed it. And I was instructing then. Uh, so I really loved that, and uh, so I was uh, weightlifting and then uh, working construction. So I started working construction during the day and then continued working or working out at night um, for quite a while. Uh, one day, uh, this gentleman comes to me and he says, uh, Steve, have you ever done uh, building maintenance? I said, sure. You know, I did, first did that when I first got out of high school. And uh, he says, as you know, I own a lot of commercial properties, and, you know, lately my phone's been ringing off the wall with complaints. So... You know, he, he had a problem. Uh, he says, well, I'll come talk to you in, in a few weeks. So a few weeks pass, and he comes and he talks to me, and we go to lunch, actually. And he says, uh, you know, I've got a 15,000-square-foot building. I'd like to uh, have you take it over and, and clean it for me. You know, it gets cleaned five days a week. Uh, is, is that something you're interested in? And I said, sure, sounds great. So that's what I started doing. Uh, I, I stopped working the construction, and I started just cleaning this, cleaning this building. That's how Hanson Building Maintenance got started back in the uh, back in the mid '80s. Uh, you know, about '87, yeah, 1987, because I actually had started that company before uh, before Gene and I got married, if I remember right. So that's how Hanson Building Maintenance got started. And this gentleman owned a lot of uh, commercial buildings. Uh, he would also do build the uh, build the suit and so on and so forth. And that's really where I got my experience in uh, obviously post construction cleanup. You know, here I've already had a wealth of knowledge on building and, I, you know, building buildings and, and all types of different things. So I had construction knowledge, uh, plenty of construction knowledge. So I, know, I knew my way around a construction site, obviously, and I knew if I was looking at a site, what exactly I was looking at. Um, so that really helped when it came to doing the post-construction cleanup, let alone during this time that I was working the construction in his company, I built a very strong relationship with all the superintendents, the other superintendents. So whenever a job would come up that they were building out, guess who they'd call to do all their cleaning? Well, they'd call me. So that's what I would do. I would get the call, I'd go uh, clean the building, and also I'd ask, well, who's moving in? You know, who's a tenant? Because then I would go ahead and uh, contact them and ask them, you know, who's going to be doing your cleaning of the facility? So there I got, well, I was able to do the post-construction cleanup, plus I was able to go ahead and hopefully close the deal on uh, doing reoccurring clean, cleanings. So anyway, you know, I continued to do that uh, for, for many years, and I built up the business, and I think at that time, Gene was still working uh, uh, retail, and um, I think it was probably about seven years uh, after I started the business, uh, Gene, Gene eventually did start doing uh, bookkeeping and things for me, which, was, which helped a lot. Uh, but then about seven years, I think she decided to leave, um, leave her retail job and come to work and wor for us to work together. So anyway, that was a thing that w we took some time and we talked about it for quite a while uh, because we weren't sure if we could actually work together. So uh, that's, what, uh, that's what we did. We discussed it and decided, okay, let's do this. And it was probably the best thing we ever did. 
Uh, Jean has a wealth of knowledge in administrative management. You know, she's just a just a, a rock star in all those things. Uh, my strengths were operations, you know, and just building efficiencies and systems. Uh, just very good at that. I always have been, and that's why you know I have to say that's why our our uh, cleaning company was so successful. You know, I always enjoyed sales, and Gene always enjoyed marketing. You know, and and so you know uh, we just made such a great team. And uh, so, you know, we would uh, we really didn't have to do a whole lot of marketing because it was mostly word of mouth back then, uh, you know, because, you know, you do good work and you do it for a fair price, uh, word gets out. And as everybody knows, even today, it doesn't matter, you know, it's 2017, it's all about your personal relationships, you know. Uh, it, it's not about texting and, and calling and emailing, it, it, that you don't build relationships that way. You build re relationships face to face. And that's exactly how I built that business. So we continued to build that business, and it was, uh, I think, oh, I can't remember how many years, 15, 17 years, something like that. Uh, but I think it was, well, 2001, uh, we decided to sell our company, uh, 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 Handsome Building Maintenance. Uh, during that time, we had grown this thing and built it into a very, very successful company. Uh, we actually had done some lateral movements in our business to where we had one division called Boise Ultrasonics. Well, what we did in there is that we actually cleaned uh, different items with ultrasonics. So we would clean, we started with mini blinds and we started uh, cleaning mini blinds and doing repairs on mini blinds. Then we started cleaning computers, electronics, uh, uh, all types of different things, artificial trees, plants, things like that. Uh, so that that division took off too, and you know that was quite an investment. We invested uh, you know over fifty thousand dollars just in equipment, but anyway, we we built up this successful company, uh, and we decided to sell because our parents were having some uh, some health concerns uh, back then, and we decided to move back to the Midwest to be close to them so we could help them. Um, so what we decided to do is that we decided to move to Minnesota. Uh, you know we didn't want to move back to La Crosse, Wisconsin. Uh, or to uh, Minneapolis, uh, the Twin Cities. So, but we decided to go to Brainerd, Minnesota, which we knew of. Uh, it was a resort town, just a small resort town, about 13,000 people. Um, then, you know, in the summertime, the, the population just exploded, obviously. So that's what we decided to do. You know, and during this time that we were building uh, handsome building maintenance, we always, we always developed other companies, too. Uh, Gene had started one company called VA Office Solutions. Uh, where she offered uh, uh, virtual assistance uh, services to people all over the United States. So actually, you know, back then, nobody knew what a, a VA was, you know, a virtual assistant. So, you know, she was really uh, one of the first people that, uh, that jumped, you know, that developed that. And eventually, Jean started training other VAs through, uh, I believe it's called AssistU, I think it's called. That's where Jean got her certification. And then she became a trainer and started training other uh, people that were interested in being virtual assistants. So anyway, when we moved to Brainerd, you know, Jean, I think she still had that company. Uh, you know, we, do, we sold our, our cleaning company. And when we got to Brainerd, I told her, I said, well, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about just starting another small cleaning company. So I started doing some research and, um, and found out that the, all of the suppliers, the janitorial suppliers in that area, uh, really didn't know a whole lot about, uh, <laughs> about the, the business. I would call and I'd ask them basic questions about chemicals or, or products or this, that, and the other, and they just couldn't, they couldn't tell me. So uh, it was at that time that I decided, and Gene decided, that we're going to start a supply house also, a janitorial supply house. So that's how our name, uh, Brainerd Lakes Cleaning and Supply, uh, became, uh, became that name. So we started a janitorial supply house and, and a, cleaning, a commercial cleaning company. Uh, I should mention on both these, on both companies, when we first started them, uh, the first one, I didn't do any uh, residential until I was probably, uh, I don't know, probably a year or so into it, and I started getting people uh, from hotels and some residential uh, 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 realtors contacting me, wanting me to do move-outs and, and turnaround, turnarounds and things like that. So that's how we started getting our, our experience in the residential side of things. When we decided to go to Brainerd, now that was a different story. That, that you know, I'm going to somewhere where nobody knows me. Uh, I don't know anybody, uh, so you know, we had to do some marketing. Join the chamber. That was always the thing that I always did. I was always joined join the chamber, got involved, and you know, it made a difference. You know, that's how you build relationships. 
And uh, so I started doing that, and uh, it was about three months before I actually got my first commercial account. But I also hooked up with some property managers so I could do some residential move outs uh, for them too. Uh, same thing, uh, homes and, and apartments and things like that. So that's what we did. And eventually, you know, we did offer, uh, uh, you know, reoccurring services for homeowners uh, on the residential side of things. Um, so we did that for a while. And I think, uh, well, that was in uh, 2009. We continued, we, we built that business up uh, in a very short time. Uh, and in 2009, we sold it. Uh, so it took us half the time and, and we did it with half the people. Obviously, because of the systems that we developed, uh, from Hanson Building Maintenance uh, over the years. You know, we developed systems and processes and things that just made us very, very efficient. And really, that's uh, the difference in a, in a cleaning company. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter what you're charging. Uh, it doesn't, a lot of things, it just doesn't matter. It's who's, who's the most efficient, who has the best systems. You know, if you're the most efficient uh, uh, cleaning business, you can offer lower prices because my margins are better because I'm more efficient than my competitors. And that's really what it comes down to. So that's why, you know, when we start uh, uh, sharing uh, numbers and facts and things like that there, it, it really doesn't matter who's charging what and, and, and so on and so forth. It's all about your systems and who's being the most efficient. Well, you know, uh, in 2005, what we did is we, we started the janitorialstore.com. And the reason we started that is because we were seeing, uh, you know, the internet had came out, obviously, and we started seeing a lot of bad information on the internet. Uh, people just giving advice that was just horrible. Um, and, you know, I just, even today, that's the same problem. You know, you still see the same thing on Facebook and some of these other things. You know, the advice that people give uh, is just horrible. Uh, they're way off base. Uh, and it just it just makes you cringe that maybe somebody is taking this advice to heart and actually trying some of this stuff and, it, and it's causing them issues, you know, uh, either either uh, fines or penalties or whatever, you know, so So that's why I, I always say, uh, you know, don't believe everything you're reading reading here on the uh, On the internet, you know, Facebook and all the social media, you know uh, Just uh, always get a get a get a, a professional opinion from somebody that's been there done that, you know um, the, the biggest thing that I always hear is that people always uh, say, well, a friend of mine told me that I can subcontract, you know, so they don't want to use employees, so they use subcontractors. Well, that can run into issues if you don't do it legally. So that's one of the biggest things we always hear, you know, and, uh, and a lot of people, you know, have gotten into trouble doing that. But uh, anyway, so we started the janitorial store in 2005. And uh, we continued to build that, and obviously at that time it just took off like a rocket. And we continued to work in brain relation cleaning and supply also. And um, but then when we when our parents again were their health was really uh, really uh, getting poor. At that time we were able to drive five hours and and be there with them. But um, you know we decided uh, that it would really be nice if we just had the freedom. To, to pick up and go whenever we needed to, just to be with be with them and, and, and help them through whatever they're going through. So at uh, on 2009, we decided to sell brain relation cleaning and supply, and uh, and uh, that was part of the reason why we did that is because of uh, you know we wanted to help our parents. Uh, you know, Gene's father was had all uh, Alzheimer's, and uh, you know, and uh, that's something that's just uh, is a horrible horrible thing, but. But uh, that's why we did that. And uh, in 2000, uh, what was it, 2009, I think it was, that we started uh, My House Cleaning Biz. The reason we started My House Cleaning Biz is because we had so many residential people coming to, to the janitorial store and asking for more and more information about residential cleaning. So since we knew that area, we decided to go ahead and start uh, another website, a membership website called MyHouseCleaningBiz.com. So that how, that's how that came to be. So uh, when we sold our business in uh, 2009, uh, we sold it to a local company. And again, you know, that's just knowing who your competitors are and so on and so forth. But we sold it to a, a local company that was down in the Twin Cities. Uh, that was just a no-brainer for us. Um, when we sold that, uh, we had a very tight non-compete uh, uh, agreement to where it was a five-year multi-state. So I couldn't start a commercial cleaning company, you know, in a multi-state area and so on and so forth. So it was pretty strict. But what I did is I actually opened up a, a, a residential cleaning company uh, called, uh, um, oh, what was it? Home Cleaning Plus. 
Yeah, so I, I started up that, you know, Home Cleaning Plus as a residential cleaning service, and I went out and started uh, doing reoccurring cleanings on homes. So uh, did that, and then um, when uh, my non-compete expired, I developed a company called One Source Facility Care. So now uh, I have no restraints on me. I can go out and do co commercial cleaning again. Uh, and uh, so I started that company, and I started to do, uh, you know, I was getting, uh, you know, we're pretty busy on, on the janitorial store and house cleaning biz, but I'd be going out and I'd do uh, some, uh, some bids, and I would uh, also do some uh, specialty cleaning, such as stone or carpet or something like that there, you know, things that most people can't handle. Uh, I would go out and do that for, special, uh, for specialty jobs. And uh, we did have a client, uh, one of our clients up in Brainerd contact us that had, uh, you know, some flagged granite in their lobby uh, that needed, uh, needed it uh, uh, cleaned and uh, sealed. Uh, their current cleaner had no clue as to how to do that, so we went up there and I took care of that uh, problem for them. But uh, that's what, uh, that's what uh, I did, uh, you know, and, and uh, a lot of times, uh, you know, sometimes you'll see these haters out there, they'll, they'll talk about us or talk about me and say that, you know, the guy's been out of the industry for all these years and ha doesn't have a clue what the heck's going on. Well, little do they know that I had a cleaning company called One Source Facility Care and, you know, uh, Home Cleaning Plus. You know, rather than doing some research and actually finding out what the heck I, what, the, what we're doing or what I'm doing, you know, they just rather talk uh, and, uh, you know, just be haters and, and, and just say uh, negative things about us. But, you know, that's their issue, not ours, you know. But uh, anyway, so, you know, and I actually, uh, I actually decided to close down uh, One Source Facility Care about a year ago. Um, I had a conversation with Gene, you know, and I'm not a computer person, you know, I'm not a person that likes to sit at a desk. And uh, so I had, to, I had to really make a decision, uh, you know, either I'm going to continue, uh, you know, building, uh, building uh, brick and mortar companies, you know, the, the cleaning, commercial cleaning companies and so on and so forth, or I'm going to focus strictly on the janitorial store in my house cleaning business and help others build their businesses. So that's what I decided to do. So that's why it was about, about a year ago it's been that I decided to not take on any more jobs for one source facility care, uh, one, one source facility care and uh, just let it kind of you know, fizzle out. And that's what I did. But you know, lately I, I seen one of these haters that was on uh, uh, YouTube uh, talking about that I've been out of the industry since 09 or 15, 10, 15 years and I don't have a clue what's going on. Well, little do they know that I had a company that was still existing one year ago. And, uh, you know, the other thing is, too, is that now that I do a lot of consulting with uh, people all over the United States, I do a lot of phone consulting, and I also do on-site uh, on uh, consulting, uh, coaching. So, you know, uh, I've been out to New York, Dallas, Texas, over to Colorado, you know, on-site, working with people, uh, helping them develop systems, you know, production, uh, 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 things like that, create, creating production uh, uh, systems. So, uh, you know, and if you want to talk about when was the last time I actually did any cleaning, well, it was probably about a month ago I, did some, I, I cleaned some carpets. So, okay, great. But uh, anyway, you know, uh, just, to, just to set the point that, you know, these, pe these haters that keep on talking their stuff really don't have a clue, you know, what, what I'm doing, what I've done. Uh, but, you know, really, when you look at our track record, it, it all speaks for itself. You know, uh, uh, Gene and I have been both uh, published in, uh, in industry uh, trade magazines. Uh, we have partnerships with the associations. Um, you know, I think our credibility is, is pretty firm, uh, and it's pretty firm out there. And, you know, the thing is that, uh, you know, our main focus is to help our members uh, become successful in what they do. And that's really all I care about. So all, everything and everything I do is all about uh, the members. I constantly will negotiate with with businesses and people to try to give our members uh, some good uh, deals on uh, services or or products. Uh, you know, and I'm going to continue to do that. So, you know, uh, that's all I really care about. You know, uh, generally when I'm negotiating a deal, people always ask me about what where's my cut. And I said I don't want a cut. I just want to give give my members the best deal I can give them. That's all I want, and uh, so that's what I continue to do. And it's pretty, you know, sometimes it's tough to put these deals together, but 
you know, we continue to do it, and I'm going to continue to to look for good partners uh, so that so our members benefit, you know, from from what they have. So anyway, it's now it's uh, 2017, and uh, you know, been working uh, primarily just on the janitorial store in my house cleaning biz. We have uh, given the janitorial store a facelift. You know, it's been updated. Uh, we're doing the same thing for my house cleaning biz right now. Uh, you know, just going to be relaunching it, uh, giving it a, uh, you know an update. Uh, we offered a premium membership uh, on the janitorial store. Uh, in 2017, we launched our, 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 our learning management system. That's been our goal from, from day one when we started the janitorial store. Uh, we want the janitorial store to be a resource for people to come and learn uh, and train uh, and just be able to uh, use the systems and develop systems for the cleaning company uh, so they can be successful. You know, and the thing is, is not everybody wants to be a million dollar company. You know, we have some solar entrepreneurs out there that are very happy with, you know, only, you know, uh, doing 125 or, or $50,000 a year, you know, and that's fine. Uh, you know, that's fine. There, there's no, you know, it doesn't mean that they're any less successful than somebody that's doing uh, 10 million. Uh, that's just not true. Everybody has their own goals and everybody has uh, their own idea of what success is. Uh, in either case, you know, we're here to help. And uh, we do, we help people from people that are just thinking about uh, starting a, a business, a cleaning business. And we have uh, some people that are doing multi-million dollars, uh, you know, $50 million in business. It's, you know, those are some good sized companies. But you know, that's what we're here for. Uh, we can help people with all aspects of their business. Uh, we developed the marketing systems by design um, a few years ago. Now that's, it's all about marketing. That was the one piece that was really missing uh, for our members. Uh, we had everything else uh, you know, for them, but we just uh, didn't have a real good marketing piece. Well, Gene's a certified duct tape marketer, so now we're able to offer you know, uh, up-to-date, real uh, marketing strategies for our members as they move forward, either as building a website or SEO or whatever, whatever that might be. You know, we have a team that can handle all that. And, uh, you know, and it's not outdated stuff. Uh, again, see, people don't know that stuff. They don't know this stuff about us, you know, uh, of, of what we're doing. Um, but, but that's, you know, those are, like I say, those are the things that we're doing, and we're going to continue to do that. Uh, and that's why I just wanted to do this video to bring people up to date as to, you know, how we got to where we got and where we are now and where we're heading. Uh, you know, the, like I say, the My House Cleaning Biz will be, uh, will be updated and we'll be offering a, a premium membership on there too. The premium membership gives people access to the site, the full access to the site, plus uh, Clean, Smart uh, Clean Smart University. Clean Smart University is where we have over 8,000 training videos um, for, your, um, for yourselves, the, the owners, managers, and supervisors. Uh, you can do some uh, frontline cleaning or uh, frontline cleaners training on there too. But it's primarily for the for the manager owners, managers, and supervisors. Uh, you can get into leadership and all these other different uh, training skills that people need, and that, frankly, what people are lacking. So that's why we developed that. Um, but we're going to continue to move forward on things. Uh, you know, with our, our LMS, we're going to continue to add uh, videos, and we're also uh, you know we have a, a, a I don't know how many training programs, uh, quite a few. Those, we are going to uh, get those certified. Yeah, we've got 13 programs uh, that we currently offer people, and we're going to get those uh, SIT certified, uh, which is going to be quite an undertaking. So we're going to do uh, you know, two or three at a time, and uh, then we're able to you know, get those on our LMS, and then we're also going to be able to do on-site uh, training so we can get people certified in these different areas. But uh, so that's where we are now. Uh, brought you all up to date, and uh, you know, Gene and I do, uh, are going to continue to uh, again uh, build our sites, offer great information, uh, great content. Um, you know, uh, that's the thing with, with our site is uh, you know, uh, people often ask me that well, why don't you franchise, and you know, that's something we don't want to do. You know, there's no need to franchise when you have that wealth of informa information that we have. Uh, on our sites, you know, it's all there. It's just people need to use it, and you know, and if you're struggling uh, with something, you know, just let us know. Be more than happy to help you, point you in the right direction, and uh, you know, because that's what it's all about. You know, well, all I care about.